I haven't really sold it. You know, all I all I know is uh, when I recruit somebody, uh, I always talk about the positives. I talk about uh, coaching the young man. I talk about other coaches on the staff that would be coaching them. Uh, about the education at the university. Uh, you know, all those kind of things. I, I, I never bring up the many other places I was at. Have you run into any issues with kids who you recruited when you were there that maybe- it's Kind of a funny thing. I mean, like, uh, like they'll be, hey, hey coach, I, I, don't, I never thought I'd see you in red, you know, like that. And I said, well, that's funny, because my wife says she thinks I look really, really good in red, you know, and, uh, but you no, know, that's about it, that's, that's about it. Uh, front row left, Dave? Coach, uh, schematically, the stuff you guys ran in Michigan and the stuff you're doing here, how much of it is similar to what you guys did up there and how much of it is maybe a combination of what you're doing, what you did there and what Coach Hadley wants to do? Well, there, there are only so many things, I believe, in really sound defensive football that you can do, whether you're in the NFL, whether you're uh, wherever coaching, you know, and uh, I think that that means you've got to be able to play a eight-man front at times, you've got to be able to play man at times, you've got to be able to play zone, and you've got to be able to pressure, and uh, all of those depend really on the type of players you have. It, it, it's never been schemes that have won, you know, it's, it's what you teach the players to run and then who's running them, and, uh, and I've been really, really impressed with our players. They are, uh, I mean, they are so uh, willing to do whatever you're asking them to do. And they're so into trying to be the best they can be. And, um, you know, so in answer to your question, I, I don't think there's any comparison to anything. I think there's a, there's a set of things, if you looked at NFL teams, if you looked anywhere, you'd say, yeah, they do this, they do this, they do this, good teams do this. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. Third row left, Dan? Greg, how do you feel like you guys as a staff are meshing so far? What do you feel like the dynamic has been among all you guys? That's a great question. And, and, and I, I'm going to tell you this. I think uh, I, I'm a very fortunate person because I have the ability to work with a great staff. I mean, this is, I mean, when you walk in the door every day and you've got one of, or if not the best defensive line coach in, in college football, right in your meeting room, coaching the guys that you need him to coach, Larry Johnson. Uh, you got Jeff Hapley, uh, who's got tremendous experience in the back end. Uh, and then you got Al Washington, who is a, a really, really intelligent, uh, great young coach. And, uh, and and then you got Matt Barnes, who, who's been a coordinator as such at a, at a little Big Ten school prior. So we have a great staff. And the staff is not a staff made up of a bunch of egos. And that's what really, really kind of hurts staffs. This staff here is truly a staff that wants Ohio State football and the players we're dealing with to be the very, very best they can be. And you feel that every day you come in. And, and I love it. How much responsibility do you feel personally to be a leader of that staff? <laughs> Well, that's my job. You know, I think when you're a coordinator, and that's what the word coordinator means. I mean, it means coordinate great people's ideas. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, a coordinator to me has never been a guy that comes in and you're going to say, you're going to do this, 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 listen to me and let's do it. You know, I mean, a coordinator is a guy that coordinates other people's ideas and coordinates other ways of doing things. And, uh, and being a co-coordinator with Jeff, that's what we do. And that's why, again, I say we're very, very happy to, uh, and uh, lucky or fortunate to have such a good staff to be able to give you that. Uh, far left, Lori. Coach, the uh, defensive lineman we talked to said that there are a lot more north, south, and east, west in their movements this year. Where was the genesis of that change? Well, as you people may know, my. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you, I am, uh, I love D-line. <laughs> I've been with D-line most of my life, D-line and linebackers, but D-line. And uh, the first day I got here, and when I watched them in the weight room, and then I watched film of them, everything like that, it, it wasn't hard for me to see that this group of D-linemen is as good as there is. And, uh, and I've always been a believer that when you have talent up front, turn them loose, let them go. You know, there's a, there's a lot of ways you can get pressure on a quarterback. And, and uh, sometimes it's a linebacker, sometimes it's a secondary. 
But when you have four guys and you've got backups to be able to keep them fresh, to be able to bring them in the game, uh, that's as good a pressure package as you can have. And, and so I, my feeling was we're not going to have you going sideways running stunts and, and, and making up for other type things. We're going to have you uh, do your job and come forward. And, and along with that, though, we talked about the fact that, okay, if we put it in your ballpark, we put it in your hands, now you've got to take care of that. You gotta do it, and they're all, they've been great. You know, and uh, it's a super group of guys. Front row right here, Bill. Obviously, you were not here last year. You were not involved with the struggles. When you looked at the defense, I mean, what did you see when you studied tape, and how good do you think this unit can and should be this year? Well, you know, I don't look at what went wrong or what people said went wrong with the defense. When I came in here, that's not what I was about, you know. Uh, I looked at the positives, and uh, I, you got a secondary that um, is, I mean, fast, strong, experienced. You got linebackers that are, they look like D linemen, and they run like they're supposed to run. And then you've got this defensive line that I was just talking about. Um, you know, I just think it, it, a lot of times people look at that and they might be young and little things happen because of their youth, you know, and now they're a year older, okay? Um, you know, I, I, again, our thing will be to try to keep it simpler and let them play and, uh, not, and not make it too simple, but put it in their hands more. And, and I'm not saying they didn't do that before, but I'm just saying that's what we're going to do. And... Uh, you know, I, I, I just look forward to, to seeing how they keep responding and keep going. Other than your wife's comments about the red, have there been a, any kind of, oh, I'm really at Ohio State and not my former school moments for you? No, no, there haven't been. Uh, you know, and, I, and obviously, it's been in 13 years up north, and, uh, and, and I've got great people up there. You know, I mean, that's, uh, you can't, I'm not going to say anything about that. But uh, the thing about it, when I came here and was fortunate enough to be hired here and, and, uh, and to be with Ryan and be with the staff, um, it, it didn't take long. It didn't take long. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I know it's a huge deal. It's, it's bigger than anybody really knows. But um, when I walk down these halls and when I go to that meeting and when I sit in there and see our players, you know, it's not big anymore. I mean, that to me, I'm fortunate to be here and I'm excited to be here. Front row left, Doug. Greg, when you look at the different guys you have on the defensive line, when you look at some of the depth you have at linebacker, it seems like you have three guys who could play at middle linebacker, what you talked about in the secondary, what you're doing with the bullet position. How many guys in the fall do you think could play an important role for this defense with how you could rotate at different positions, what you might do situationally. Could you could you have 20 guys who have a role on this defense, or how could that look? Yeah, I, I am a very, very strong believer with the way the football goes now, with all the tempo, with, uh, with what we demand of our defense, and that is you are playing four to six a to B, as hard and as fast as you can. There is no such thing as a loaf. And, uh, and so therefore you're asking four down defensive linemen to go as hard and as fast as they can. You're asking three linebackers to go as hard and as fast as they can on every play. If you can't do that anymore, raise your hand and there's somebody that we're getting ready to be able to go in and give you a break. And that's our deal, that we have enough depth and we have enough talent that the next guy steps up, gives you a break. It doesn't mean you did something wrong. It means you can come back and be way, way more healthy and way more vibrant, way more energy, and then uh, the next guy goes back in again. So I do believe that there could be 20. I haven't looked at the numbers. I just know when I look at people, I go, boy, uh, that's a second teamer? I mean, that's <laughs> a pretty darn good second teamer, you know? And I really believe in this. I believe when you have a really, really good defense, you don't have a first and second team. You have a first, first team, and you have a second, first team. And that's how it's good luck. That, that when, when Chase Young gets tired from going as hard as he can go, all he has to do with Larry is just raise his hand, and there's the next guy that has worked as hard as he could through spring and in, in summer and in camp. He's now ready to go in. 
and the same thing with at linebacker. So there aren't such a thing as first and second anymore, in my opinion. It, it, it's more first team and a, and a second first team. And specifically with the linebacker group, just with what you guys are doing with the bullet position, but the, but the other sort of base linebacker guys, could you just run through a couple of the names of, of the linebackers who you feel are, are ready to play and ready to contribute? I really don't want to name guys yet until the spring is over. You know, I, I really don't. Uh, I, I, could, I could probably name the entire group. I mean, I really could. And I'm not trying to. It doesn't it seem like you have good depth there. Uh, there's no question. And I'm afraid, and that's what I, I'm, I'm trying to guard against. I don't want to not say a young man that has really looked good, you know, and uh, I think it's something you're going to see, and you're going to see it, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's a positive deal. Third row right, Rob. Greg, go back to Florida if you can for a minute. Uh, you had a cup of coffee with, with uh, Ryan there. What Did you see anything from him even when he was there? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, you know, when you when you coach as long as I have, you get a lot of people that kind of come through the door. And there's some of them, you look at them and you go, oh, really? You know, I remember him the first day. I remember him the first time he came in there and I went, where's this guy from? Where's this kid from? You know, and, and uh, somebody said, and I said, man, he's so mature. He's so, so way ahead of his time. And then, then I would run into him over the years after that and and see where he's done and where he's gone. I mean, you're in the NFL now. Well, I believe that. I see that, you know, and everything. Then when he went here and, and I went, yeah, Urban don't make many mistakes now. And, uh, you know, that, that doesn't surprise me a bit. That he, in answering your question, yes, he's one of those guys where I would have said, no doubt, this guy's one of those guys. And, and, and I can tell you this, I, I feel very fortunate to be here with him. He, he, he just so far ahead of his time. And, uh, and that's become very evident to me right away. Fast forward to January, just the, the, the inner workings of when he approached you, did he lay out what he wanted the defense to look like? How did that kind of go down? Because you, you, you Yeah, he, you know, he, he definitely, he definitely um, wanted us to be able to play the kind of defense that he's seen me be associated with. And again, it's pretty evident with Larry is it always has started up front. And uh, you want to be a very physical team against the run. And you want to be a pressure team, whether it's a pressure with a four-man rush or it's a pressure with blitzing or whatever. But you want to not let quarterbacks sit back there and feel pretty good about themselves. And and uh, I know he's seen that since we, we've been against each other, or he's seen us on film and that kind of thing. And uh, he knew that's what I believed in. And uh, and then with uh, with Coach Halfley being so ahead of time with the secondary and understanding all that, it was a it was a a, a really good mix, and it, and it looked like uh, to me it was a great deal. And final questions for her, right? Awesome, great. When you guys are looking at that bullet position. What are the traits that you want in a player to play that role? Bullet position is a is a, a position where that guy can play secondary. I mean, he can play middle safety. He can play half field safety. He can and he can come down and he can be your old strong safety. And then at the same time, he can be that nine technique Sam outside linebacker. Then the, what takes him to the next step is Kenny also blitz. And if he has that ability to blitz too, you've got the whole package, you know. So it really gives you the ability to, you know, people aren't going to let you uh, substitute much anymore. You know, you used to be able to, hey, I'm going to put this group in, this group in, and all that. And they don't do that with Temple now. They're making it hard for you to do that. Well, now you have a guy that, if, if he's the right guy and he shows it, he can play the run strong enough and then help you with the things you want to do in the secondary also. Yeah, so that was, that was another question I was going to ask. Do you sort of view that as almost the, the bullet is part of the base defense for you guys at this point, not a sub package? Yeah, it could be. I mean, it depends. I mean, we could go a whole game and, and bullet, you know, and at the same time, you go a whole game and regular. Gotcha. And uh, one more question. Second row left, uh, Bill. Hey, Greg, uh, it looks like you guys have, them, have the backers split up sort of inside and then, I guess, like Sam slash bullet guys and then separate groups. But with that inside group, um, 
Is the expectation that all those guys could potentially play Mike? It looked like Dallas and, and Taraja both were, were seeing some time in the middle, and I didn't know how much fluidity there is with that yeah. group. Mike and Will, yeah, there, there's a Mike linebacker and there's a Will linebacker. But anywhere you're at, if you have the people that I know we have here, and Al does a great job with it, the Mike's got to play Will, the Will's got to play Mike. You're going to always put your best players on the field. So as the spring's over with and we rank them, it might be the Mike, this Mike is number one, this guy's number two, this Will is number three. Well, if something happens, that Will goes over to Mike. You know, And I've always been a believer, if you know the position next to you, you play yours better because you understand everything that's going on. Coach, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, folks. Thank you.